Hi, I'm Ms. Warnow, and we're going to start our new unit on chemical reactions. We have spoken about um, indications of a chemical reaction. We talked about a gas being produced here at the beginning of the school year, and we could notice a gas being produced. We may see bubbles, see some fizzing. If the gas had an odor, we could smell it. Lights produced, we um, showed you this when we burned magnesium um, at the beginning of the school year. The formation of a precipitate. Remember, the definition of precipitate is a solid formed from two solutions. A temperature change. If, it's, if you have an increase in temperature, it feels warmer. That would be exothermic. If um, the temperature goes down, you have a uh, decrease in temperature. It feels cooler. That would be endothermic and, of course, a permanent color change as seen in this picture here. A chemical reaction is arrangement of atoms to form new substances. So um, for a, a, a chemical equation, we have the reactants. This would be the reactants. And they appear to the left of the arrow, and we call that a yield sign. And then you get the products. When we look at this chemical reaction, we'll notice that it has this little G here. That indicates that that hydrogen is in the physical state of gas. Um, it's a ga oxygen's a gas, and over here, the product water has uh, is in a gaseous state as well. Notice that we have this uh, subscript two, subscript two by the hydrogen and oxygen. Just as a reminder, that's because hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic elements, which means when they're not in the compound and they're by themselves, you always have a subscript of two. Now, when we look at an equation, we notice. Uh, these larger numbers here, these are called coefficients, and we use these numbers to balance the chemical equation. And of course, we have the subscripts, which you've learned about in nomenclature. Those are those small numbers that we have right here. It would be a, um, a, a subscript here, and this is a subscript, and this is a subscript, okay? So if we look at this um, iron three chloride, it has a set understood one here, so that means you have one iron, and that three means that you have um, three chlorine atoms. We look at this one, there's an understood one for the magnesium, there's one magnesium. Um, when we look at the three right here, that means that there's three oxygen. And when we look at this two, this two actually goes with everything in parentheses, so there are um, two nitrogen and two times three, six oxygens. Okay? So symbols used in chemical um, reactions, these would indicate the physical state. It could be that the substance is, in, is a solid. It could be a liquid. It could be a gas. AQ means aqueous. That's what it stands for. But the, that means the substance is dissolved in water. So if you saw sodium chloride with an AQ there, that means it's salt and water. The sodium chloride has dissolved in water. So what are some indications or some words that you might see that could indicate that you have an aqueous solution? Well, we could come out and just say you have a solution of sodium chloride. We could also give you the concentration of the solution that we have. And so that big M there means molarity. And what that molarity stands for is moles per liter. So if you ever saw a number with the big M, and we're actually going to talk about um, with the meaning of that molarity in another unit, but it does indicate that that NaCl is in solution. We could say sodium chloride is dissolved. That would mean it's aqueous. Or we could just come out and say aqueous sodium chloride. The plus in a chemical reaction just separates the reactants and the products. And when you're reading it in a word equation, it would say reacts with and. The uh, arrow here is the yield sign. Um, it, re it reads as reacts or produces. It separates reactants and the products. When we see this, this little delta sign over the um, yield sign just means heat's been added. And then we also have um, symbols for catalysts. Catalysts are things that can um, increase the rate of reaction, but they are not used up. So if there's a catalyst, we actually write it above the um, yield sign as well. And then we have this, um, a double arrow, just means reactions at equilibrium. That's a later concept, but it just means that the forward and, reaction occur, forward and the reverse reaction occurs at the same rate. According to the law of conservation mass, we spoke about this at the beginning of the year, matter is not created or destroyed in chemical reactions, so the mass of all reactants must equal the mass of all products. So if we were just looking at this, we'd say, what is the total mass of reactants in this um, reaction? So we know if the products are 72, then the total mass of the um, reactants um, is 72 as well. What is the mass of zinc produced? Well, 
we'd have to take a moment and say what's 125 plus 40 we get 165 so what does the mass of the zinc have to be it would be 165 minus the 100 that's set in there we get 65 grams so that would be 65 grams okay. because the law of conservation mass always holds in a chemical reaction we must always be sure we are working with a balanced equation and so um, a balanced equation is one which number of atoms of each atom are the same on both sides so we have to balance these so what I always do is always write down each element and then I count how many are on the left side so there's one sodium over here there's one sodium there for iron, there's one here, and there's one here. For chlorine, there's three on this side, and there's one on this side. So on the product side. So it's not balanced. So the only thing we can do in order to balance an equation is change the coefficients. So what could we put in front of this NaCl to make there be three? Chlorine. So when we put a three here, now we have to recount this side. Now there are three sodiums and there are three chlorines. So now that the chlorines are balanced, the sodiums are not. So what could we add to the reactant side? We put a three here and now it's balanced. So this would be a balanced equation. Notice there's no change in the subscripts there. Okay, so let's work one of these. With balanced equations, only add coefficients, never alter the chemical formula. So we do our little inventory here, that I always do. We have one calcium on the left, one on the right. One oxygen on the left, one on the right. One carbon on the left, and we have two, three carbons on the right side. So if we're going to try to balance this, we could come over here and say, okay, we'll put a three here. And when we do that, we recount it. And I believe it's balanced out. Now there are understood ones here. In these spots here, you don't have to write understood ones. Let's look at this one. We have um, hydrogen and oxygen. So on the left side, we have two hydrogen. On the right side, we have two. Oxygen, on the left side, there's two. And on the right side, there's one here and two here. So that means we have three. Okay, now I'm just gonna erase this. This is when you see where I was at. So whenever I get to one that looks like this, Put that over there. Two and three. I always think, okay, first, are they in the same element? In this case, they're not. The oxygen is actually split over here and over here, okay? So I, I tend to find what's the next even number up from two and three, and that's four. So I'm going to make my reactant side have four. So there's two here. If I put a two here, that's going to make me have four hydrogen, and two and two is four oxygen. And then so over here, if I put a 2 here, that makes me have um, 4 hydrogen and 4 oxygen. So this is now balanced. The, real, the only rule for balancing equations is you can only change coefficients. Do not change um, subscripts. So you can um, balance these in any way you see fit. Now looking at this one, there's a polyatomic ion here. Um, ammonium. And ammonium's here, and then you have hydroxide, and you have hydroxide here. So when the polyatomic ion appears on both sides, I tend to keep those together. So I'm put my ammonium, my hydroxide, my iron, and my chlorine, and I count them up. There's one ammonium on the left, one on the right. There's one hydroxide on the left, three on the right. There's one iron on the left, one on the right. There's three chlorine on the left and one on the right. So if I pick some place to start balancing, say I start with the hydroxide, I'm gonna put a three here. That makes me have three ammonium, three hydroxide. And so if I come over here, let's fix the ammonium, I put a three here, that means that there's three ammonium and three chlorine. And so it is now balanced. All right, let's balance this one. This is a what we call a combustion. It's a little bit, uh, combustion reactions tend to be a little bit trickier. This is a little trick that, um, that you can use. Um, this trick only works if the hydrocarbon only has carbon and hydrogen. If it has anything else, this method doesn't um, work. So let's use this. It says balance the hydrogen first, but let's count everything up. You have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You have seven carbon, one carbon. You have 14 hydrogen and two on the right. 
oxygen, two on the um, left and three on the right. So it says balance the hydrogen first. And so what would we need to put here would be a seven. If that coefficient is odd, double it. So it, it is odd. So I'm going to erase it. And instead of putting a seven there, I'm going to put a 14. So now that makes you have 28 hydrogen. It makes you have 14, 15, 16 oxygen. So let's go ahead and balance the hydrogen on this side. There's 14, so we'd need to put a 2 here. That makes you have 14 carbon and 28 hydrogen. So our hydrogens are now balanced. What could we put in front of the carbon dioxide to make there be um, 14? That's the number 14, so we'll put a 14 here. Now that makes you have 14 times 2 is 28, plus the 14 oxygen over there. That ends up being 42 oxygen on this side. So what number could we put in front of this oxygen to make there be 42? And it is 21, and then it is balanced. This concludes video one on reactions. You should have taken high quality in-depth notes and rewatched the videos needed and ask questions.